first pitch. I'm up there first pitch, and here comes a curveball. And I start giggling. And the catcher looks up and he goes, what are you laughing at? I said, the Express is throwing me curveballs. <laughs> you know, there are a lot of people that don't necessarily want to have all the spotlights on them. They don't want to have the, the bat when the game's on the line, stuff like that. That's what I lived for. That's the situation I wanted to be in. I did not want to come up to home plate and have nobody on, nobody out. I wanted to have two runners on and, you know, you get a base hit and you move around and you set them up for the next guy. Or if you get a pitch to handle, whammo, you can't want out the yard, you know, whatever. Everybody takes in the whole moment. Whereas for me personally, I I zeroed it up. You know, everybody's going crazy. Everybody's going insane. It's me and the pitcher, and I'm just trying to pick up that ball out of his hand and tattoo the hell out of it. That was it. Pal, that's it? That's all the pitchers. We got to get into West West Coast swing here. Well, those are the only internet friendly pictures we could find. So, (laughs) probably. Okay. So, so, all right. So, <laughs> Max, Max, good, good. <laughs> well, I also remember because of the wind, you would get all the trash just like blowing around and by the chain link fence. And then someone yeah. would hit a home run and it would be like a wrestling match out there and left. That's a great one right there, Kyle. You know, <laughs> some of the guys, you know, who know me well, they go, What did you miss about the stick? What you seriously, what do you miss about the stick? And I said, You know, it's a little sadistic to say this. I said, but I missed the fact that you had a hundred freaking hot dog wrappers blowing around. <laughs> like, All right, one of them has to be the baseball. Which one? <laughs> <laughs> the night before, uh, Vince Coleman, we were losing seven nothing. We were playing behind him at first base in like the eighth inning, and he stole second and third. We're like, we're gonna get you. We're gonna get you. And uh, then this happened the next day. I already know I'm at first base. I already know if Candy hits a grounder, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go get somebody, all right? And the rule was all you had to do is be able to touch second, which I did as I went by it. He kicks you. He kicked me, and then I'm getting up, and then he hit me in the helmet, and then all hell breaks loose. Boom. <laughs> there's one. There's, there's Ozzy standing behind me, hit me in the helmet. Oh. Oh, another one. He gets out of my grasp. I get him again. Wham! I get him again going to the ground. Here comes Candy Malinata. Why don't take Ozzy out? <laughs> <laughs> the left. <laughs> <laughs> so now you guys don't see this now, all right? So now, after this, because Candy cleaned out Ozzy, Bob Brenly comes in from the bullpen, and he he, he must have hit Ozzy <laughs> ten times. I don't know. <laughs> Dusty Baker's right there. 12 is Dusty Baker. He's right in the middle of it. <laughs> no, it's, it's hysterical. It was, this was a good one. This was a, oh, there's Kevin Mitchell. I mean, yeah, it's Brindley and Ozzy after Brindley's hit him about 15 times. <laughs> NL Championship Series, Giants-Cubs game one, 1989. You hit a grand slam off Mr. Maddox. Is that where you're going? There right you go. There you go. Yeah, reading lips. I was going to put myself yeah. on mute and see if you could tell me what I said. First at bat, he goes sinker away, and I get a double in the left center. Next at bat, he goes, he threw one or two fastballs away and a bunch of changeups away, and I wound up moving up on a plate, and I hooked a home run out of right center. So now we have two other left-handers in the lineup, Brett Butler and Pat Sheridan, and he is pounding them in. So common sense dictates – Sooner or later, I got to see something in, right? So I'm standing in the on deck circle with Kevin Mitchell, bases loaded, fourth inning, two outs. And I'm looking at Greg Maddox and Don Zimmer comes out the dugout. And Don, needless to say, is a lot shorter than Greg. And Greg Maddox went fastball in. And if you've ever been to Chicago Wrigley, I mean, you're pretty close to the mound. So I'm paying, I'm looking right at him. So I told Boogie Bear, Kevin Mitchell, I told him, I said, did you see that? He goes, no, what? I said, he said, fastball in. He said, what you going to do? I said, I'm going to freaking look fastball in. Thank God I didn't miss it because I got exactly the pitch I wanted, exactly where I was looking for it, and did not miss it. Yeah. Like right behind me is the Padres bullpen at the old stadium in Jack Murphy, Qualcomm, whatever you want to call it. And they shoot a freaking cannon. Boom. It scares the hell out of me. I'm like, oh, Jesus. So we get the second guy out. Then here comes Tony Gwynn. We just talked about him. We could never get him out. Lay one in there. Whack! Homer. Boom! They shoot the cannon. All the military guys are going crazy. Third guy comes up. It's Carmelo. I think it's Carmelo Martinez. Lay one in there. Whack! Homer. 
boom, shoot the can. All the military guys are going crazy, right? You know, we're down 3 nothing. So here comes the pitching coach out to the mound. I know, I know. I'm getting the ball up. I'm over striding. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing that. You know, and me and the ball's right there and whack a Hoya, you know. And the pitching coach looks at him. He goes, no. And he, he points in the dugout. He says, Roger. And talking about Roger Craig, our manager. He says, Roger wanted to give the cannon guy time to reload. <laughs> <laughs>